Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a POS system to run your business. We'll walk through configuring your software and hardware, setting up inventory, importing customer data, and entering employees. And along the way, I'll explain the similarities and differences between a self-installed and a professionally installed system, as well as what steps are optional and what steps are critical. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mary King, staff writer and restaurant and retail specialist for Fit Small Business. Let's get right into installing a point of sale. The first step to installing a POS is choosing a POS system that fits your business. The type of POS you choose will influence your installation options. The major decision will be between a server-based, sometimes called a locally installed system, a cloud-based system, or a hybrid system that's kind of a combination of the two with a local server that's backed up to the cloud. If you choose a cloud-based POS that runs on iPads, then you can generally self-install. And sometimes simple hybrid installations can also be self-installed with some guidance from your POS provider. But server-based locally installed systems are locally networked through ethernet connections and generally all require a professional installation. So keep that in mind. Today, I'm self-installing a single POS terminal using the Square for Retail POS. I chose this system specifically because it is self-installable. It runs on iPads, and I already have one. It has a free baseline POS subscription for both retail and restaurant operations, and I've linked to both free Square systems in the description if you want to give either of them a test drive. But once you've chosen your POS, the next step is to configure your hardware. This includes the basics of creating an account, inputting your business information like name, location, and owner's contact information. If you intend to accept card and digital payments, you'll also need to input banking information. If you're self-installing, this step is all performed online, usually via the POS platform's management dashboard. For those with professionally installed systems, you'll send this information to a customer service representative at the POS company who will do this setup for you. Depending on your payment processing settings, it may take a few business days to get the appropriate approvals and identity verifications from your bank and credit card processor. If you're using a Square system like I am though, Square will typically just ping your bank account to verify and you can get up and running within four business days is what they say, but I've never waited longer than a single day for Square verification. While you're waiting on those approvals to finalize, you can typically move on to the next step, which is configuring your hardware. Self-installers do this by usually downloading the POS terminal software from the Apple App Store or Google Play, wherever it's available, then inputting the device information into the POS systems management dashboard. dashboard. It's kind of similar to how you might connect a Roku to your smart TV. Uh, you go to the devices screen and add the device information, which in this case is our main iPad. Uh, typically, self-installed POS systems will generate a device code in the POS terminal that you'll enter into the management dashboard. Some others might just have you sign into the POS terminal with the same login credentials as you use for your management dashboard. But from there, once you're in the terminal, you can connect cash drawers, printers, card readers, barcode scanners, um, anything like that via Bluetooth or lightning connection or sometimes via the iPad's headphone jack. That's usually where the card readers go. If your system requires professional installation, the customer service team at your POS partner will configure the hardware before they ship the terminals and other hardware to you. If you have a complex setup, like you need three or more terminals or you have a multi-floor restaurant or shop, your POS may require an on-site technician to install each terminal with routers and Wi-Fi signal extenders or ethernet switchboards. With your hardware installed, the next step is entering your inventory so your POS has items to sell. This is one spot where the professional installation can give you a nice leg up. If you have a professionally installed POS, their customer service team will generally add 
your menu items or some of your inventory items when configuring your software. They won't necessarily set up your whole inventory management system, but this is a step where professional installation can buy you some administrative time if you need it, um, if you have the option for professional installation. For us self-installers, we add inventory items in the management dashboard. With this version of Square, I have to add each item individually. But some self-installable systems allow you to upload your inventory from a .csv file, which can definitely save time. If your POS has inventory tracking tools, you can set on-hand quantities and receive low stock alerts. Uh, some systems will also provide space to enter vendor information so you know exactly where to place orders when you need fresh stock. Um, this next step is optional and will depend entirely on whether you are a new business or an existing business. Existing businesses should take the time now to import any customer data that they have. This may simply be your customer profiles and purchase histories, or it might include a full-blown loyalty and rewards uh, program. Typically, this is done by uploading a simple .zsv uh, spreadsheet, but you wanna make sure that your customer data spreadsheet is formatted correctly for your POS. So it imports the information clearly. Most POS systems will provide you with a template um, that has their preferred format. And some professionally installed systems will also just take care of this import for you if you already have the information. Okay, so now we've got items to sell and people to sell them to. What about people to sell them? If you have employees, you'll wanna enter them now and add custom permissions. This task typically falls to the business owner or managers, if you have them, uh, regardless of whether your POS is self-installed or professionally installed. Pretty much everyone has to add their own employees and set permission levels for each role or team member. I'm on the free version of Square, which only comes with one set of team permissions. Um, with the paid tiers, you can get customer, you can get, sorry, custom user permissions by role, but uh, the user interface ultimately looks the same for either one. You choose which POS functions each user has access to, who can ring in sales, who can add discounts or refunds and things like that. So in a larger operation, your managers and cashiers can have different access levels, or in a restaurant, you can control which POS screens are default for servers or bartenders or hosts. Now, all that's left is training your employees to use the system. And in most cases, professionally installed POS systems come with one day of either remote or in-person training for your team. Most self-installed systems nowadays give you training materials via an online knowledge base, um, though some will provide you personalized training for a fee, so you should definitely ask. But now that you've got your POS set up, check out our video on how to use a POS to get started growing your sales. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy selling and have a great service.